Longtime Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans reserve a special place in their hearts for former head coach Tony Dungy. He turned the program around in the late 90s, made history as the first black NFL coach to win a Super Bowl. But there's much more to Tony Dungy's life and legacy beyond football. Deanne King reports from our sister station, WFLA in Tampa. But I remember exactly what I was thinking. Born one generation after segregation, racism was reality for Tony Dungy's parents. He, he walked past all white schools to end up teaching in all black schools. The two school teachers raised Dungy in Jackson, Michigan. Uh, I can remember watching with my dad on a little black and white TV and George Wallace was the governor of Alabama and he was stopping these two African-American students from entering the school. He said, we'll never have Negro students at this school. And I was probably 10, 9, 10, asking my dad, what, what is this all about? And my dad said, you know, there's some people who may not like you because of what you look like. We don't do that. We don't treat people like that. We don't respond that way. You do what God would want you to do, and that's be kind and courteous to everybody. Christianity and kindness translated in everything Dungy did, including sports. From college football to playing in the NFL. This is 1978, my second year in the NFL. He retired at 25, then got his first coaching gig as assistant coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And at that time, I think there were 11 African-American assistant coaches in the whole league. But race wasn't the only obstacle. It wasn't just lack of African-American coaches, but my style. Um, I was soft-spoken, I was a teacher. Um, as a Christian, I wasn't one of those guys who was gonna yell and scream, and that's what a lot of owners wanted at that time or thought they needed. And uh, I can remember an owner telling me in an interview, I, I don't think your style will work in the NFL. I don't think people are ready for that type of leadership. But the Tampa Bay Bucks were. In 1996, Dungy became the head coach, the first black head coach for the Bucks. He turned the program around in six seasons, but was fired in 2002. That was tough. Uh, I was here six years. Our family was here. We loved it. And um, you know, to, to all of a sudden have that uprooted and say, okay, we're going in another direction. We don't really need you. Um, we, we had to think about what we were going to do. Well, his family headed to the Indianapolis Colts making history. In 2007, he became the first black head coach to win the Super Bowl. It brought tears to my eyes when we won the Super Bowl. And my dad's first teaching job is in Arlington, Virginia, and he can't ride on the bus and he can't go to certain places, and he can't teach in certain schools. And one generation later, we win the Super Bowl, and I'm invited by the president to bring my team to the White House. And I'm sitting in the first seat, in the first bus. <laughs> it was, uh, it just made me laugh almost, you know, that this is what my dad was talking about. You just work and do what you're supposed to do, and you'll make a difference. And that he did. And I remember thinking maybe some young African-American men and women are going to watch this and say, I can do more than just play. Maybe I can coach the team. Maybe I can own the team. Maybe I can be the general manager. Uh, may, maybe there's no limits to what I can do. And uh, that, that's a good feeling. A role model, humanitarian, an icon, the Hall of Fame coach, goes beyond football, ministering to people in prison, giving back through his foundation with his wife, and more. What do you hope your impact is? I've always wanted my impact to be uh, helping people not just dream, but helping them pursue those dreams. Reporting in Tampa, I'm Deanne King.